Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. I'm down in the back part of my Portland, Oregon permaculture food forest here. We are in zone 8B. It is mid-October. You can see down here I have my fig trees. I have an apple tree behind me, Cox's Orange Pippin over here. I have our turkey roost up here. And I wanna talk about a tree that I have mentioned a few times this season and not really talked about in depth. And I think it is worth a good look. That is this tree behind me, Mespolis germanica, the medlar tree, a really ancient European food crop. So let's take a few minutes and examine this beautiful little diminutive tree and why I think it's a good addition to a permaculture garden in a temperate climate. Now, just like in my recent pawpaw video and in past videos where I've covered jujubes and other unusual permaculture tree crops, I encourage you to find someone growing this fruit and to eat it before you plant it in your garden. Medlar is not for everybody. My plan this winter is to taste it for you all on camera and describe it as best as I can, much like I did with our pawpaws. Just know that this is an unusual fruit and it's not for every palate, but it is something that perhaps you can acclimate your taste buds to and learn to enjoy. I liked it right off the bat because I think it tastes a lot like tamarind, but some of my kids really, really hate it. So medlar is actually in the rose family. You can see by looking at the fruit, let's see if we can get a good look here. It has a very rose look to it, right? I can get this on the camera here. You can see that it looks very much like a rose hip, but brown. Very similar, like a huge rose hip, but brown. The tree itself has kind of almost like a tropical look to it and has beautiful flowers early in the spring. A really lovely spring specimen tree. It's also self-fertile, so you only need one to get fruit. And boy, oh boy, does it set fruit, copious amounts of fruit every year. Even this year where we've had a cold, wet spring and then a very hot, dry summer, it's just absolutely loaded with fruit. And this year they are the largest I've ever had. Hi turkeys. So you can see the medlars on it are huge this year, much larger than in past years. Which <coughs> Hi, Bra Bra. Hi, everybody. Yes, I'm in here and you can't get to me. So these fruits are not ripe yet. When they are ripe, you actually can't eat them then. You have to go through a process called bledding. So I wait until it gets cold and they start to fall from the tree. I collect them all into a basket. I lay them out in my mudroom and I let them get very soft. Again, that process is called bletting. It's kind of a controlled rot for the medlar where they soften over time, much like when you harvest a pear. It is rock hard when you harvest it or a fuzzy kiwi, and it has to soften over time on the counter, and then it becomes delicious and sweet and edible. Medlar is no different. So I think it's something that the modern American consumer is completely unfamiliar with, even though it's been eaten for probably a thousand years in Europe. It's a tree that is naturally quite dwarfing. It's slow growing, so even a small garden has room for it. Now this is a grafted variety called Breeda Giant, and giant refers to the size of the medlars on it, not the size of the overall tree itself. Unlike other grafted fruit trees, when you plant a medlar, you want to bury the graft below the surface of the soil. So that's a, a tip that I think is important for success with a medlar that is different than other fruit trees you may be growing in your orchard. Medlars prefer a slightly acidic soil around pH 6.5, but they can handle much more acidic. My soil is closer to 5.5. They also can tolerate a wide range of soil quality from sand to straight clay. They are hardy down to minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. That's USDA zone four. Mature medlar can easily bear 25 pounds of fruit per year. So this is a tree you can see it here brushing up against my Negron fig that I absolutely would grow again. It's small, it has beautiful spring flowers. It stays fairly small, easy to control, slow growing, and produces abundant crops even in really crummy years when a lot of other things fail. I'm gonna get a lot of medlars off of it. It is a fruit that is different than other things that I normally would be consuming. And so it is something that is a flavor and a texture that you have to kind of adapt your taste buds to. I really like the 
inside fruit of the medlar pureed with whipped cream. I think it's really tasty and delicious over gingerbread. So that's a look at Mespolis germanica, a really ancient cultivated crop that perhaps we can bring back in to cultivation in temperate climates. If we want to increase our resiliency, if we want to look for those crops that can produce consistently, even with really wildly fluctuating temperature patterns in a changing climate, Medlar is a really good one. I don't water this tree at all. I only watered it the first year it was in the ground. I don't do anything other than prune it once a year and harvest the fruit off of it. And it produces like gangbusters every year. And not only that, in the spring, it is a beautiful feast for the eyes and a buffet for the bees. It's a really great tree for your garden. I'll be back really soon for more out here. Hopefully we're gonna get some October weather soon. It was almost 90 today and I'm really over it. There are lots of fall chores that I've been unable to do both because I injured my thumb and also because it's been really stinking hot. So I'm hoping that the weather will turn cool and rainy here soon and I can start to get my plants going dormant and get those fall chores done. I need the ground to be softer. It needs to rain and loosen up the very hard dry ground so that I can start planting and transplanting. I need plants to go dormant so I can start pruning them and also transplanting them. I'm kind of in a holding pattern here and I'm really, really looking forward to fall hitting, though I feel like it's not going to come into full swing until maybe November. Really, really frustrating. I want my cold gray Oregon. So thanks for watching. I hope that you are enjoying your autumn wherever you are, and I will be back very soon. Please check out down below ways you can support this channel in the description.